Welcome everyone to JRPGs You Might Have Missed. This is the series where I highlight a game that probably escaped your notice. If you think there is a game that should be featured in this series, be sure to jump on down to the comment section and leave your suggestions for future episodes. In this episode though, we're going to be talking about Infinite Undiscovery. <laughs> Infinite Undiscovery is an Xbox 360 exclusive JRPG that I really wish would hurry the hell up and become available on the Xbox One backwards compatibility service. When it was first released, it was met with a lukewarm to positive response, most reviews pointing out that there was definitely an enjoyable JRPG in there amongst the large empty maps you're dumped in with little or no direction. Perhaps Infinite Undiscovery is an apt name then. The only thing you're likely to be infinitely discovering is GameFacts.com to consult a walkthrough on where you go next. But is that really a bad thing? Infinite Undiscovery evokes a similar feel to that of a really old school JRPG, but it does so in a very nice modern graphical outfit with a surprisingly fun free roaming live action battle system that brings back memories of playing Fantasy Star on my GameCube. The lack of direction, handholding, or quest objective markings is both a good and a bad thing. It's bad because it's something you expect nowadays, but the good part is remembering what it used to be like playing a JRPG. When was the last time you felt genuinely lost in a game? If that's a feeling you miss, Infinite Undiscovery is a perfect example of blending that old JRPG style with many of the other luxuries we have in modern JRPGs. The story isn't going to blow you away, but like all Tri-Ace games, it is compelling right until the very end, even if you can guess sort of what happens next. The characters are all a little cliche, but it just adds to that traditional JRPG charm it is going for. There are also some really deep mechanics that some will get incredible enjoyment out of, and even if you aren't in it to min-max or 100% the game, you'll still find a rewarding 30 or so hours of gameplay to reach the end, and a splattering of post-game content to keep you entertained for at least a few hours after that. The only downside of course is that it is an Xbox 360 exclusive for the time being, but we can always hope Microsoft pulls their finger out at some point and brings more games that are actually exclusive to the 360 to backwards compatibility, instead of porting over games that can be played on 12 different platforms already. Thanks for watching! If you liked this video, hit that like button. Be sure to jump on down to the comment section and let your picks for easily missed JRPGs known. Follow me on social media, and if you like my content, you could consider supporting my channel on Patreon. Other than that, I'll see you all soon.